All right, in this video, we're going to do the print that's labeled slot plate. This isn't an intro print. This was added to the package later on after we got the slot block in the control. So we've talked about the slot block in some previous um, videos that we've done, and we've always done a frame with corner radiuses when we do the slot. Well, now we're going to see the slot block and how it's used. So the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to start a new program, new conversational. I'm going to set up my stock geometry. And it's going to be a cylinder. Oop. Yes, I want to manually size it. It's going to be a negative Z in the direction. The length is 0.5. And it's going to be a 4 inch radius. The center of the surface is 0, so I don't have to do any thing with my reference positions here. And I already have a bunch of tools set up in my library, so I don't need to mess with doing the tools. So we're going to write into the programming. So let's go to Input, Part Programming, Milling. We're going to select the More tab, which will give us more options for programming. We're going to select Slot. Now here we see three different tabs at the top of the screen. Start, which is going to be the beginning of the slot. We're going to tell it what kind of slot it is here. The geometry will basically be the end of the slot. And then we're going to have to put some caps on this slot, whether they be appended, uh, um, included in, or squared off, things like that. So the first thing we're going to do is determine what kind of slot are we going to do. In the previous prints, we did straight slots, which we would have been able to do using line. In this print, we're going to select an arc. These are three arced um, slots. The width is going to be one inch. And the starting point, I'm going to start at the far right side of the part in the center of the radius of the slot. So we're going to go to three inches in X. This is, those are on a six inch diameter, so it's three inches in X. It's going to be zero in Y. I'll start at point one. Let's go down uh, 520 to break through. Let's use tool. Let's just select a tool from the list here. I'll go get an end mill, maybe a half inch end mill. And we'll make that a pocket boundary. The next tab is the geometry tab. This is basically the end of the slot. We don't know what the X and Y is. We could figure that out, but the control can do that as well. So we're just going to skip them. We do know the center. That arc is going to swing around the zero, zero point at a three inch radius, and it already calculated that for us. And in this case, we actually know the sweep angle. It's going to be 60 degrees. Now, I won't put a positive or negative 60 in there because I have this direction flag. In this case, I want to go in the counterclockwise direction 60 degrees. Now, if you look at the dimensions that I put in and you look at the dimensions on the print, everything is to the center of the radius on both of or on both ends of this slot. So we have to now cap off the end of this slot. We have a couple of options. We can do them with a line where it would just be squared off right on those dimensions. We can append the arc, meaning we can add it to the end of this slot, which is what we're going to do. Because again, we program center of the radius to center of the radius, or we could include it where those ends or those arc ends would be inside of the um, slot that we created. So we're going to append on both ends, because you can do them independently. The half inch radius auto automatically filled in for us. So now if we draw this, you can see we have a slot, and it is where it's supposed to be. So to get all three of these on here, I could either continue to, to do more slots, or I could simply do a pattern, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back to my program. I'm going to insert a pattern, loop, rotate. I'm going to do it three times, including the original, around the zero point. I'm going to start at zero degrees, and I'm going to do it every 120 degrees. And I will do that
before my mill slot and I will add a pattern end after my mill slot. That way I get my three slots going all the way around. Now let's add the circle in the middle of this thing. So I'll go back to my program. Go to the end of my program, insert a block before. Let's select milling circle. Zero, zero. It is a three inch diameter, so we will go 1.5 on the radius, 0.1 minus 0.52. Let's use a uh, three quarter inch in mill here if we've got one. And we'll make that a pocket boundary. Now, if you notice on the print, it's telling us that we have a 30,000 chamfer by 45 degrees. So we're going to use a chamfer tool to do that. Now, I don't want to go through and reprogram everything that I've already done. So I'm going to use that information, copy and paste it, and just change some information in it. So I'm going to go back to my program. I need to chamfer the inside of this slot. So I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to go ahead and open it. I'm just going to change the depth, minus 0 0.03, and the tool that I'm using. I know that I have tool 4 in here as a half inch chamfer mill, so I'm going to select that. And in this case, I don't need to pocket. I just need to be the cut on the inside of this slot. So I'll just make that an inside. If I draw it now, I should have a slot and they've already been chamfered. I need to chamfer that circle that we did. So we're going to copy and paste. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to change the depth and the tool. Also, I'm going to make this an inside. And then I'm going to add a circle to do the outside of the part. Milling circle. This is a 4 inch radius. 0.1 minus 0 0.03. Using tool 4. Outside. All right, so now we have a part that's cut and chamfered. We were able to cut, copy, and paste uh, the blocks that we'd already programmed and reuse those. Now, you may have noticed, though, that the prioritization is wrong. I'm doing all the milling, then I chamfer. Then I mill, then I chamfer. Then I mill, and I chamfer. So we have the same options that we've had in the past. We can either add a tool change optimization block if we have that in our program or in our control, or we can copy the blocks, paste them, delete what we don't need. I'm going to choose to do it that way because not everybody purchases that option. So I'm going to do it the old school way. So I'm going to click on block one and I'm going to click on my function key on the control or shift in my, on my laptop and click on block seven. That gives me all of those blocks. I'm going to copy them. Then I'm going to paste them. So in the first group, I want to do the pocket boundary. I'm going to cut the slots. So in that case, I'm going to delete the chamfer block or the inside slot that we did. On the next circle, which is the center, I want to do the pocketing but I'm going to delete both of the internal and external, the ones that are using the chamfer tool. So the only thing I'm left with then is the um, mill circle all the way through the part. Now we look at the second group, but I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to get rid of the pocket boundary in both. And I'm going to leave the inside and the outside circle 
that it's using the chamfer tool. So now if I draw this, I should have all my slots in the circle in the middle, and then it's going to come back with that chamfer tool and then chamfer everything, therefore prioritizing all my tool changes.